Hi everyone, Chef Mike here. Today we're gonna to prepare for you a fish taco that's gonna be served alongside some uh, really great uh, healthy foods, a lot high in antioxidants, uh, fiber, um, omega-3s. We're, we're gonna try to have a big spectrum of these different kind of micronutrients and different nutrients um, available in foods. Uh, the reason we're doing this is to support not just uh, physical health, but mental health as well. Uh, a lot of food can be attributed to not just guiding you through uh, your physical workouts and, and your labor of the day, but also mentally engaging you. Um, the foods we're gonna look at right now are gonna be looking to uh, reduce cortisol levels in our bodies by delivering something that's super tasty and delicious. So um, let's get started. So first, um, with our tortillas, um, I just wanna talk about nixtalamization. I know it sounds like a really fancy word, because it is. Um, so what nixtalamization is, um, is the hauling of corn. So the, the Mexicans or the Incas in that area knew how to, knew intrinsically how to soften their corn and make it more flavorful. They used that by, by adding an alkaline solution to it. So whether it be anything between charcoal or limestone. Um, today we use lye, but what it does basically, they soak the hard uh, corn kernels. Now this isn't the corn that we use um, up north most of the time where we eat corn on the cob where it's nice and sweet. This is a little more dense and a hardy corn with a harder outside hull. So what we do is we still soak that into the, uh, the alkaline. Now, through science, what we figured out is that this process of nixtalamization actually helps um, to have reduced myotoxins, increases the, the flavor, uh, and also gives you more availability to the calcium that's in the, uh, the uh, mixture. So if you look here, I already took the um, masa. So this isn't just regular corn masa, this is harina masa. Harina means it had, it was been, um, had that process of nixtalamization to it. So what we would do is we would add uh, hot water to rehydrate it and then let it sit so it, it comes a nice ball like this. We're gonna be using this a little later on to make our fresh tortillas. Um, this is a great uh, whole grain way to incorporate um, some good gut health and fiber into your diet. So we'll just place this over here. Um, in the meantime, we had our oven already preheated. I always try to keep everything kind of ready so we can kind of flow through this whole cooking uh, experience. Even when you're at home, it's really important just to have your things ready. If you need water boiling or you need your, your oven on, just always have this prepared. So we have our oven set at 475. Uh, we're gonna be using that for two purposes. We're gonna do a little uh, corn salad with black beans, and then we're also gonna roast our fish. So right here we have some, um, Atlantic uh, flounder that is freshly caught. Um, so we're not gonna do too much to this. I'm gonna give you a couple options. So one is we're gonna, first we're gonna always start it by seasoning it with a little bit of uh, fresh or fresh salt on there. So just a nice even coating of salt there just to bring out some of the natural flavors, sweetness of the fish itself. On a couple of these pieces, and this is uh, up to if you want, I like adding a complimentary flavor. So. This is something that we made a little spice blend. So we have some wahio peppers in here, garlic powder, cumin, uh, onion powder, and um, we're just gonna lightly sprinkle on our fish. This is kind of like our, our in-house made um, mixture of, or like a taco seasoning almost. So if you want to use something that's prepared, you certainly can, but it adds a nice flavor. So if you ever use a dry rub, you always wanna put your salt down first so that salt can kind of melt into your into your uh, flesh of what you're, you're using, whether it's seafood or even tofu, always season salt first. Because once you put the dry rub on there, the dry rub's gonna look like a barrier around the fish, so the, the salt won't penetrate. So we're gonna put a, a fairly liberal amount of taco season there, we're just gonna rub it in lightly, and we're gonna do it on this filet as well. So this is you know, a fairly thin piece of fish, this is gonna cook you know, about seven to 10 minutes at 475. If you have something thicker, if you want to do a piece of salmon or mahi-mahi filet, um, and salmon would be a great alternative because it has high omega-3s, um, that might take a little longer just based on your thickness. Uh, so we're gonna wanna cook this till, till it's about mid-well. You don't wanna cook all the way through to like dry out the fish all the way. So let's place that in there. Now secondly, what we're gonna do is, so we can have all our, um, all our roasting items going, uh, we're gonna move into doing the corn. Now, I know I'm gonna do this on my, my heating pan, my pan over there. Uh, it just makes more of a mess on the cutting board. So I usually just like going right on the cutting board right here, or onto my, my sheet tray, and I'll just cut down the corn kernels. A nice sharp knife. 
So all we're gonna do with this when we roast it is we're just gonna drizzle a little bit of olive oil in there, a little bit of salt. And we're just gonna roast this for about 10 minutes. So approximately when the fish is done, we'll be able to pull both of these out and then move on. You always can see these corn kernels if you're a really adventurous cook, um, the, the stalks. And you can use the, the interior part of the corn to make a nice uh, corn stock for a, if you wanna do a corn chowder or a, a chilled corn soup, cause it's going to be towards the summertime. Um, which is really uh, a great addition, adds some nice sweetness. So we're just, again, a little salt, and we're gonna put a little bit of olive oil on there as well. And we're just gonna mix that together a little bit. You never wanna use too much oil, just enough, just to lightly coat. You don't wanna drench everything in oil, lay out nice and flat. And again, we're gonna go right back into our oven. It's along with our fish. And about 10, 12 minutes or so for the corn and seven to 10 minutes for the fish. Awesome, so I hope everyone has a sharp knife because we're gonna do a lot of knife skills. Um, these are gonna be really simple, but really flavorful tacos. So we're gonna do a guacamole and we're also gonna do a pico de gallo. And on the side, like I said before, we're gonna do a black bean salad that has a little bit of fresh mango, uh, cilantro, a little tomato um, in there as well. So as we prep the, the, the avocado, um, guacamole, and then also the pico de gallo. We're actually gonna be cutting all the vegetables at the same time for each, each component. And I'll show you how we do that. So we're gonna start with our plum tomatoes. So we have four plum tomatoes there. Um, so first, we always wanna practice safety. So whenever we're cutting anything, we wanna make sure our, our fingers are curled behind. Always make sure your thumb's behind everything. It's gonna kinda of help you hold on to, to whatever you're slicing or dicing. And the reason we keep our fingers curled is so we can keep the knife against our fingertips and it'll just slide back and forth. You don't have to worry about it cutting them. So uh, we'll just take this top part off real quick, the stem end. Um, I keep a little bucket next to me, um, part of my mise en plus or having all my ingredients in one place that I need them. And I'll use a lot of this as my stock bucket for later on um, so I can repurpose a lot of this. So first we're gonna do, start with the, by cutting these into a nice, uh, quarter inch dice. So I'm gonna choose to come down long ways this way first. As you notice, as I'm slicing through with the knife, I'm not just chopping with it. Knives are meant to slice, not chop. So you can just do one nice pull through. Like that. Beautiful. So I'm just gonna get through these four really quickly. If you're not going as fast as me at home, don't worry. It took me, took me years to get this quick at it but practice will make perfect. I always say the hardest part of cooking is obviously doing the prep. And if you can get really comfortable with a knife and it will just, I think, make your, the joyfulness of cooking so much more pleasurable. It'll really bring it to the, uh, the forefront. So we're, what I like doing is doing all of the one cut first. So you see how I'm cutting them into like little matchsticks. Um, I'm kind of a believer in repetition makes perfect. So we'll just kind of keep slicing these down like this. And last one here. So we're not, we're not trying to make these absolutely perfect, but just nice, nice bite size. So what I do is I turn them long ways, kind of like little logs almost. And then I'll just use my cutting board just to slice through these. So we want to go from tip of the knife, down, push through. So we're slicing through those, we're not chopping them. So slicing right through those tomatoes. See it's rocking on the tip of that knife all the way through. And push that over, give myself a little more room. Another great thing to keep on the side of you is having a little side towel. So you always can wipe down your cutting board. Just make sure it's always clean. Um, so we're gonna take a little bit of our tomato. This is gonna be for the pico de gallo. And I'm gonna take a little bit of these tomatoes as well. And I'm gonna use this for our black bean salad. So a lot of this is gonna be, we're gonna make three or four different things, but using the same ingredients, just with flavor, different flavor profiles. So they all kind of 
uh, build off of each other. So from there, we're gonna move on to cutting it, the onion. Everyone's always dreaded thing to cut. So first we're gonna start by cutting this end off first, then we're gonna go right to the stem end. We're gonna try to keep that intact. What that's gonna do is gonna help you keep your onions together when you're at home slicing it. So we're only gonna need about half of this onion. This peeled part is something you don't wanna use in stocks. Um, anything to kind of taste like paper is gonna make your stock taste like paper. So if you ever wanna use any of the, the other parts of the onion, uh, please do so. So for this, we're gonna make our, our cuts. Again, as you see, I'm not chopping with my knife. I'm sliding through. So even if you have to at home, if you have to kind of jiggle it back and forth just to get it through there nice and even, that's perfectly fine until you get really comfortable with it. And we're gonna cut this long ways now. So the things with, that we're gonna really add to this dish, the fiber, fiber is gonna add a lot of really nice components. Now our fiber components are gonna be anything that's vegetable, our grains that we're gonna use, or beans. So what we have for different forms of fiber is obviously gonna be our, our uh, <clears throat> is gonna be our tortillas. We're gonna have our black beans as well. We're gonna have some good fiber from our, our romaine, our cilantro here. Um, and also our whole corn by itself that we had over there. If you want to come over here, as we always have to cook, we always have to kind of make sure we're understanding what's going on. So let's look at our fish first. That's gonna be the most delicate part. And now I like doing just like the finger test. So you see it's nice and firm, but it's not over dry and still juicy. So I think that's good. That was about seven minutes. We're gonna pull that out and we're just gonna let that cool off there. If you want to serve your tacos piping hot, you certainly can. I like mine more towards room temperature, so they're nice, really easily enjoyed with everyone, especially if I have little kids at home. They don't want anything super hot going into their uh, mouths. So we're going to go, um, we're pico de gallo there. We're going to add some of uh, this to our third bowl over here. And our third bowl is going to have our guacamole. I'm going to finish cutting this onion. Now, when you get to the end part of an onion, it obviously isn't already sliced down. So I slice it into little rings, half rings, cut that side, turn it on its end, and we'll make a nice little small dice out of that as well. Great. So uh, the things that fiber also does for your body is they're also shown to increase your serotonin, um, which is a really neat uh, facet of that. So through your gut health, uh, it will send stimulus out to your brain and help you produce serotonin, which again, will make you a little happier, make you feel a little better about yourself. Because food's really about making yourself feel good. Even like making your food, getting, getting to be able to touch it and feel is a really important part. Uh, from there, we're gonna move on to our avocados. So if anyone has never done an avocado in the past, um, there's a huge pit in the middle here. So all we're gonna do is take our knife and soon our knife is just gonna hit that pit so it stops there and we just have to rotate the avocado around like that and we just kind of twist it and pops off now there's two ways we can get this pit out of here we either can take a, a, a spoon like that and take it out or if you're a little more adventurous you could take the back heel of your knife and just whack it and give it oop, a little turn and it'll pop right out now likewise to get the the fruit out of the uh, avocado, we can either use a spoon like this and scoop it all the way out. Oop, slippery guy. Or I usually prefer just to do it this way, just to peel it. Um, I usually a lot of times like slicing these and putting them on things. So this will give you a, a better platform, kind of comes out with a nicer shape than if you use your spoon. Cool. So we're just gonna add those to our guacamole bowl. So that's the one with just a couple onions in there. And we're gonna mash that up in a few minutes. Awesome. Um, so if we look over here, we're gonna go into our garlic. So we're gonna peel a couple cloves of garlic real quick. So our garlic's gonna be very easy to do. Uh, I know a lot of people can have trouble with this. So we're just gonna cut off this little stem in and we're just gonna tap our knife a couple times just to break the, this, the skin off couple taps. Now we're gonna use about one of these cloves in each one. Now, 
We don't slice it. So the more you crush garlic, the more flavorful it's gonna become. Or that more, you're gonna have a bigger uh, pack of punch of garlic to it. So which is really nice to have in there. So we're just gonna use it sparingly. So we're really gonna crush this garlic up so you, you can't see it or get like a big bite of it while you're eating. Um, I always find that's one of the worst things if you get a big chunk of you know garlic or onion in something that's raw. You always want something to be small and palatable. So how we're gonna crush this is, simply we're gonna take our, uh, our knife first. Again, fingertips behind, tip of the knife, push through. And we're gonna cut this up first into small pieces like this. So we're gonna take these small pieces and then we're gonna take our knife and this is where we can use a little muscle. We're actually gonna, fair amount of force, we're gonna start crushing our garlic. Now, if you have one of those little crush, garlic crushers, you can use those as well. But this is gonna give you a nice paste. So as you're crushing this, it's almost gonna look like it's disappearing into the board because you're gonna get so fine. You can see all those oils coming out. But that's what you want. It's gonna give such a great flavor to our dishes. All right, so now you see if we just kind of drag our board across there. We kind of leave it there. One pro tip is, is we're gonna do about half in our pico de gallo. We're gonna do half in our guacamole. And just like a little pinch in our black bean salad bowl. Awesome. Uh, anyway, so the pro tip I was mentioning, don't ever cut your fruit on anything you cut onions or garlic on. It's gonna taste like onions and garlic. Always make sure you really wash your board and your knife. Um, all right, so as we go through here, so we have our lemons and limes. Um, let's hop over here again real quick. I think our corn's talking to us a little bit. You see that came out nice and roasted, steam coming up. This is gonna concentrate a lot of sweetness. And again, this corn, as most of you all know, is we're talking about grains and having a good amount of um, fiber added to our diets. Corn's gonna be a great way to get that fiber in there and give us a lot of nice natural sweetness. Now, some of the, some of the issues, you know, as I brought up cortisol before, is a lot of people always look, um, you know, when, when we, we're having those times of like heavy stress, stressful times, whether at our job or uh, just going through life, is that we're trying to look, you know, try to satisfy that, you know, sometimes a little craving through stress through food. And a lot of times we'll go to something that has a lot of fat in there or a lot of sugar. So things that have a lot of fat or sugar is we want to avoid those. We want to avoid anything that has fat and sugar in there and add something that has natural sweetness to satisfy that. We also want to incorporate a lot of things that are going to have that fiber or different. So we're going to add some corn and a lot of things in there that have a lot of um, fiber and great things to it. So we're gonna let this cool off lightly, but we can add our black beans to this and we're gonna build our vinaigrette right into here. Um, so we have our black beans, again, a lot of good fiber. This is also has a lot of protein. Hey buddy, hey buddy. You want some water? Good, you can take mommy's water, okay? <laughs> little guy was thirsty. Um, so we have, this is gonna be the base of our little side salad. So we have the corn, black beans, we're gonna add a little mango to that in a second. Let me finish off uh, these two guys real quick. So what we're gonna have to add is really cilantro to these. Um, we're gonna have our garlic and everything and our fresh uh, citrus. So with our uh, citrus, we're gonna use the zest and the pit. The zest is gonna give you a lot of great flavor. So uh, right here, just kind of use our microplane or rasp and we're gonna get a good amount of that in there. So you always wanna make sure you're grating with the, the grate down because as you're doing this, the little oils are actually shooting off from here. Oh, this smells incredible. I love the smell of fresh lime. So we're gonna add a little bit of that in there. And then we're gonna do the same for our guacamole base. So it's like one lime each and we're gonna use the juice of both in there. There you go. This is such a great perfume. So we're gonna take these either on the side. We're just gonna slice our citrus in half. We're just gonna add the juice of one lime into each of these. A 
as we know, great source of vitamin C with these limes. And do one more in there. Awesome. Looking very good. So um, the last couple steps to this is we're gonna grab some cilantro. Now everyone probably has a different way of cutting their cilantro where they pick the leaves off individually. Uh, what I like doing is grabbing the, the cilantro, twisting it in my hand, folding it over. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our knife, pin it against my fingers so it's kind of firm. And we're just gonna do little, little, little chops or little slices. Just try to make this a chiffonade. Now from here, you can make it as fine or as thick as you want it. I like my cilantro a little on the thicker side. I think it gives a really nice flavor to uh, to your dishes. And don't be afraid to use the stems. There's so much flavor in in cilantro and also parsley stems, even if you do anything with parsley. Well, it's coarsely chopped that. So it's, it's fairly big still. And we're just gonna put a little bit in our, uh, our pico de gallo here and also into our guacamole. And lastly, we have to conquer our jalapenos. Now, depending on the, the season and the jalapeno, they can range from being really spicy, um, full of capsaicin, um, or they can tend to be a little on the milder side. The ones we've been getting so far have been a little, little spicier, but capsaicin is not a bad thing. It's actually very good for you. Um, it will help you help control appetite as well as, well as um, reduce um, or help with uh, your circulatory system. So it's a really great um, thing to have. So if you like spicy food, try to add a little more. By no means is it going to be a, a, a magical diet or anything, but it, it does provide um, great sources of uh of vitamins has vitamin C as well in there. So what I like doing is the seeds obviously have most of the heat. I don't want a lot of heat in here. Again, my, my guys, my little guys are going to eat this. Um, so, and then also we want to get that, that white pith out of there. So it's a little on the bitter side. So we'll take that and this is kind of what we call like a roll cut. So we can just take the, the pepper, just like a little slice down and we're actually kind of just like peeling it back and, and rolling it as we cut. And you can do this with, with bell peppers as well. Uh, bell peppers won't have capsaicin because they're obviously a little on the sweeter side. Um, now to cut these, if you're really sensitive to anything that's spicy, this, you know, everyone probably at this point in time has a, a plastic glove, waste one on this. If you can deal with a little bit of things uh, spicy in your hands, just go ahead and cut this uh, barehanded. So we're just gonna cut these small again, just like the garlic or the, the onions, we're gonna cut things small just so they don't get too overwhelming when our when our uh, families or guests are, are in their house eating this. We want to kind of keep uh, anything too strong, but we want to make these fla flavors really kind of meld together and just come out with something really fabulous and tasty. So we're going to go with um, a really nice small dice on this, almost like a brunoise, which means really, really small. Um, you see, I'm moving really quick through this. If you have to take a little time and you can't move this fast, that's fine. Just take your time with it. So we're just going to keep going, 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 going. We're almost there. All right. So we got these uh, jalapenos done up. So again, we're going to do about half and half. Half's going to go in our pico de gallo. Half's going to go in our guacamole. And maybe a little less, and we'll put a little bit in our salad too. Awesome. Really great. Now the last uh, component that we're missing uh, for our um, our salad that's going to be served on the side is going to be this um, our mango. So remember I said before, avoid garlic. Well, this is going to go in that, so we're fine. But if you're just going to serve the mango by itself, definitely wash your board first. So to peel uh, a mango, we're just going to use our knife. Now you can use a peeler here too. That's perfectly fine. I like using my knife, um, just kind of following the, the bevel or the curvature of this guy. But if you have to use a peeler, that's perfectly fine. So we're only gonna need about half this mango, so let's get about halfway down. Mangoes have been really lovely this time of year. A lot of great sweetness. It gives a good color. We should always think about also painting our uh, our plates. Now, by what I say that is, try to add at least three different colors of vegetable to whatever you're making. 
So we have, as you can see, we already have some beautiful colors. We have greens and reds and whites. Um, you know, the power of food, when you think about it, if, if something's white, usually helps, like mushrooms, for instance, will help with your uh, immune system. Um, things are orange, will help with skin pigment and, and eyesight. So you have your carotene in there. So all these different uh, vegetables or fruits, you always want to look at, there's, there's, you know, what we call phytonutrients or phytochemicals that are in there. Um, that will help our bodies just thrive that much better, both mentally and physically. So we're just gonna slice this down. Again, like little uh, matchsticks first, and we're just kind of like turning it on the side. And we're gonna cut this down. So I want this to be almost like the same size pieces as I have with my, my black beans and my corn. put our mango in there. And this is gonna give us a nice natural sweet note. Now how we're gonna finish up this, like uh, we're gonna make a little vinaigrette just inside of there. Now if you wanna make this on the side and keep a little vinaigrette, that's fine. But what we're gonna do is again, we're gonna use the zest, but we're gonna use a lemon this time. So we're just gonna, a little bit of complimenting but contrasting flavors. So a lot of it has lime already, our pico de gallo, our uh, guacamole. This is gonna have a nice lemony flavor to it. And we're also gonna add a little bit of natural sweetness through honey. Now we're using a local honey. What I really like about local honey is that, uh, in thinking about it, the bees are flying around the area collecting all the nectar from the local plants and, and flowers uh, through their pollen. So that's what's gonna happen. If you have uh, bad allergies, one of the ways that naturally to help you uh, fight that off is just by using that local honey. Because those bees are out there, they're finding things. And this will give us a nice sweetness to our dish. So we're just gonna take a little bit of this, nap, this local honey. This is a, a blueberry honey. Um, not all honeys are the same. So I use like wildflower or uh, something that's a little more neutral. Buckwheat tends to be a little more abrasive or clover honey. So it's about you know a tablespoon or so honey in there. And we're just gonna drizzle a little bit of olive oil. We'll share a little olive oil in all our dishes. So we're gonna put a little olive oil on our pico de gallo, a little bit on our guacamole. That's a nice extra virgin olive oil, cold press. Now we're gonna season all our dishes. So a little salt there, a little salt here, and a little salt there. If you have to restrict salt, that's fine. Just cut out the salt um, and just use um, herbs. Herbs are a great way to get a lot of flavor. Use that um, nice uh, seasoning spice if you have something like that for your fish. Um, so you always can work around things if, if you're on a lower salt diet. But so you can fold that in there. Look how beautiful that is. So this is supposed to be our side salad that we're serving there. It's really simple. So just have some olive oils, you know, three or four ingredients in here, a little local honey, lemon for the, the vinaigrette. Um, if you wanna add cilantro to this, that'd be great too. So we've got that all mixed together. We have our pico de gallo as well. We're gonna take this guy. You see, I like using a lot of spoons more so for a lot of things that we create here. There's our pico de gallo. And lastly, we have a guacamole. Now, if you're at home and you like getting a little, uh, your hands a little dirty, feel free to mash this with your hands. Um, you can put this also in all these ingredients in a blender and make this into a really nice smooth like crema. The other one component that I will add to this, and again, this is to promote uh, a really nice gut health, is we're gonna add a little bit of um, no fat uh, Greek yogurt. Now, why are we using a little bit of yogurt? One, I like adding things in that you ultimately won't notice it. So it's not gonna change the flavor or the texture of, of the guacamole. What it is gonna add to you nutritionally is gonna add a little bit of extra probiotics in here because um, of the natural uh, cultures of the yogurt. It's also gonna add antioxidants as well. So it's a kind of a great way to kind of bolster anything. Um, when you're making food is to add things that, you know, if you're like, oh, I should eat omega-3s. Why is omega-3s in it? Oh, well, walnuts would be great. So maybe I'll get some walnut oil or things like that. You always can incorporate um, different mixtures. So right there, we have our guacamole looking lovely. All right, lastly, we're just gonna move on over here. We're gonna make our tortillas and then we're gonna build our uh, fish tacos out. So I didn't bring my press. Um, but so we're gonna do this in that home way of making the tortillas. 
So first we're gonna do is our tortilla, you know, we made the dough already ahead. So we're gonna take about a quarter or a golf ball size ball, roll in our hands. Now you want your um, tortillas to be about four to six inches in diameter. And then you want them to be about a 16th of an inch, eighth to a 16th inch of an inch thick. So you want them fairly uh, fine. So if you have a tortilla press at home, definitely use it that, that way. Um, if not, always use two bags. Even if you have a tortilla press, using this bag will help it not stick and come out with a really nice tortilla. So we're gonna press this down. And this plate happens to be about six inches in diameter. So we can just press this down pretty easily. Now this whole time we've been talking, I said we do a lot of mise en place, this pan's been getting warm. So you want your pans to get warm and everything to be ready. Um, to cook tortillas, you need a hot um, pan or something along those lines. So we're just gonna peel it off. See how it comes off one nice piece. I already had a bunch made, but just to show you how we do this. Um, the one spot that we do do is we season it lightly with oil. So we're not gonna fry this in oil, but we're gonna cook it. We're just gonna season the pan, me and make it to make it non-stick. So we'll swirl this around a little bit. You see a little smoke. And what this is gonna do is basically put, there's little holes into this pan. It's gonna fill them up with a little bit of oil. Take our tortilla and we're just gonna let it go in there. You see it starts blistering a little bit. Don't worry, it's just gonna take a few moments to cook. The steam's gonna come up off there. And the flavor of these in comparison to doing doing a pre-store bought um, tortilla is, it's night and day. Just the flavor by itself is so much better. And then also nutritionally, these are so much better for you. They have no preservatives. There's nothing going on there. This is just corn, water, and putting it in the pan. That's it. Um, so we'll just, uh, this is a fish spatula. If you don't have one, I always suggest people to get them. I use this for everything, but it, it's very flexible. So you can always get under anything that you need. So let's flip that over there. See that nice golden brown color? It's perfect. Um, like I said, this is just corn and water. And it, it just gives you a great way to get another whole grain in your diet. And then to keep these warm, what I've been doing is as you take them off, you're like, oh, that seems like it takes so long. It only takes a couple seconds to make these. And then we just keep them warm under our um, little towel here. So you have an extra towel, we just keep everything warm. A warm tortilla makes your tacos so much better, night and day difference. So that one's done. So you got a nice brown spot. You don't want any tacky parts. So you can feel your tortilla like this, so long as there's no tacky spots, cooked all the way through. It's gonna be a beautiful tortilla. So I'll put this under here with the other guys, keep them nice and warm. And um, it's time for us to plate up one of our tacos. So we're gonna bring our fish over here. We have our tortillas. So we have our guacamole, pico de gallo, and our corn and uh, black bean salad. So first we're going to uh, we'll layer our tortillas down first. So let's do two of them. Um, so I like going with my little bit of Guacamole first on there. And that'll be our base. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take little chunks of this fish off. So we'll put that right there. Beautiful. We'll top this with a little bit of our pica de gallo. I have a little bit of lettuce, I'm just gonna quickly julienne just to put right on top. So gonna garnish with a little bit of lettuce. Romaine's one of the best lettuces to use. I wouldn't use uh, iceberg. Um, Romaine just has such a great nutritional density to it. And also the flavor and the crispness is really lovely. So this will be our two tacos and we'll serve this with a little little side here, just a couple of spoonfuls of our, of our corn, black bean salad. Yeah, lovely. All right, awesome. So for our uh, mental health uh, dish we have here, packed with full of antioxidants, 
great amounts of fiber, um, it's low in sugar, and it's packed of, of full of flavor. Uh, so we have fish tacos, a little uh, guacamole, uh, pico de gallo, finished with a little bit of uh, chiffonade, romaine lettuce, and our black bean salad. I hope you all enjoy this and have a lovely and blessed day.